So let's talk about pace charts. Uh, you can find this in the 2023 workouts. And if you look at the very bottom of the page, the bottom of your screen, you can see the tab that I'm on where it says 2023 workouts. Let me move it back and forth real quick here in the bottom of the screen. That's the tab I'm looking at right now. This also has a uh, calendar on here that lets you know exactly where we're going to be practicing and what time on every date and what the schedules are going to be. So, but what we're going to be focusing on are pace charts. So down at the very bottom of the page, you can see that there are links for either the high school boys, the high school girls, junior high boys, or junior high girls. So if you click on any one of those, it will bring you up pace charts. So I'm going to click on high school girls. And as you click on the high school girls, you can see a bunch of these charts that we're going to discuss right now. So today's workout that is scheduled for March 7th, we are going to do one 500, two 400s, and three 200s, and all are going to be done at 80% pace. So based upon what I could run over 30 years ago, which was a 51, 51 second, 400 meter dash, I'm going to run at 80% my 500 meters, which is one and a quarter laps. So down here where it says 500s, this is the 80% row, and these are the times I should be running every 100 meters. Now, the final time is right here. So at the end of 500 meters, I should be able to accomplish this in 79.6 seconds. So you need to be bringing your watches. And since everybody's pace chart is going to be a little bit different, everybody really needs to bring their own watch. The other times where it says 100, 200, 300, 400 in those times, those are where I should be if I run a steady pace. Now, if you're good at math, you could probably just write down on your arm, which is what you're going to do the 500 times. So on my arm, I would write down that I can run 500 meters in 79.6 seconds and then just divide in my head that that's about 16 seconds per 100 meters. Or I could write down on my arm that these should be my time. So at 100 meters, I should be running 15.9. At 200 meters, it would be 31.8, 300 meters, 47.7, 400 meters, 63.6. Whatever you need to do, just remember that this is the important part is that your final time, or at least my final time in 500 meters, should be 79.6 seconds. Then I'm also going to write down the times I'm going to run the 400 in. So my 400 times is going to be up here. And at 80%, these are what my 400 times should be. So the final time in 400 meters is 61.2 seconds for me. Notice that is different than the 400 time on the 500 meters. And that's because with 500 meters, you're probably going to run a little bit slower than 400 meters. That's to be expected. So just don't write the 500 meter times and, say, and think that that's good. You have to go to each individual time each individual distance to find the proper time. So at 400 meters, I should be finishing in 61.2 seconds at 80%. And then for we're going to do three 200 meters, but notice that I don't have anything written up here for 200 meters. And notice it says zero and zero at 80%, and that's because we haven't done a 200 meter time trial. Now on some of your cards, you're going to notice that there is something there, and that's because I took your times from last year. Um, if you don't have times from last year, and since we haven't run them yet, what you're going to do is let's just for today, we're going to go to the 300 meters and we're going to look at the 80% 200 at 300 meters. It's probably a little bit slower than what you really need to do, but quite honest, after you run a 500 and a 400 for this first try time, you're probably going to be a little tired. So just go ahead and look at that measurement right there. So that's what Coach Quarter could have done 30 years ago is run a 51.0-400-meter uh, dash. But let's talk about Coach Quarter now. Coach Quarter now is not as fast as he was when he was in high school and college. Right here, I says 400, and then it says 101. Just so that you're aware, that is not one minute, one second. That is 101 seconds. And since... And we're going to get a math lesson here. Since there are 60 seconds in a minute, 
That means that I need to subtract 60 from that, and there's 41 seconds left over. So that means that 101 seconds is actually one minute, 41 seconds. I think almost everybody ran faster than that on their time trial in their 400. So, and it has to be done that way because the chart only does things in seconds. I can't put them in minutes and seconds. So, again, if we're running one 500 and then two 400s and three 200s, when I do my 500 time, my 500 time is going to be down here. At 80%, my 500 time says 157.6. 157.6. Remember, that's 157.6 seconds. So two minutes is 120 seconds. So I need to subtract that from 157.6. So that's 37.6. So that means that I should run the 500 meters at a pace of two minutes, 37.6 seconds. So that's what I would write down on my arm to remind myself. And then I could also remind write down the other four times. So at 100, I should be at 31.5 seconds. At the 200 mark, at 63 seconds. At the 300 mark, 94.5 seconds. At the 400 mark, 126 seconds. And then finally, at the 500 mark, 157.6 seconds. The distance charts look very similar to this. They are actually paced a little bit different with the percentages. Um, because it's just a different type of rhythm that you need for between sprinting and um, distance. However, you will do the same thing, and they also have where you should be at each 100-meter interval as well. Make sure you ask questions when you're writing these down. Again, hopefully you high schoolers, since you already know how to do this, will get this done already before you get to practice, and then we can all help the junior high get it done so we can get our workouts started as soon as possible.